So hello everyone and welcome to Let's Talk SAP and this is a talk with expert series where I talk with wonderful minds who have been working in SAP domain for quite a long time now and today we are going to talk about cloud migration and for that we have Prakash with us. Uh, it will be great if you can introduce yourself Prakash. Yeah, thank you for having me here uh, to the Let's Talk SAP team. It's really nice to see the way you guys are, uh, you know, bringing the experts and uh, sharing the knowledge and experience to this community. And I, I wish you, you know, all the best uh, for your journey. My name is Prakash Palani. People call me Prakash. Um, I'm the founder and CTO of Basis Cloud Solutions. Originally from India, right now in uh, Amsterdam, the Netherlands. You know, I'm basically an SAP basis guy with uh, 22 years of experience of, uh, you know, installing, implementing, migrating, what not, right? Anything in terms of SAP basis, that is what I have been doing. But in the last uh, four or five years, I think to, since 2016, I shifted my focus uh, into SAP on public cloud. And, uh, you know, so that's how, you know, our, start, our, our startup also uh, got into the public cloud space. Now we are also kind of uh, front runners when it comes to full stack uh, administrators. We are actually creating uh, new generation basis consultants, you know, who are not just uh, doing the basis administration tasks. Our guys or our girls, they can uh, start from cloud uh, operating system, database and basis. So that's why we call them uh, full stack administrators. And to put to support them, you know, we've also built our own uh, cloud management platform, which is again a full stack cloud management platform, which is called Symphony. So this is the two combination that we have created, and uh, we are really proud about, uh, you know, bringing the difference in SAP basis space. That's about us. Uh, that's just really great what you guys are doing. We have been waiting for something like this for so long. Those uh, monitoring tasks, which was tedious and everyone has to do in the shifts. It's so great that you are automating everything. So if I ask that, what is Basis Cloud Solution doing right now? Uh, and what is the future missions that Basis Cloud Solutions see? So Basis Cloud Solutions, at the moment, you know, we are, uh, like I said, we are predominantly focusing on helping our customers to move into public cloud, be it Azure or AWS or GCP, in a fastest and efficient manner, uh, not just moving, also managing them. Because as per the, you know, latest uh, Gartner results as well, building a business case for cloud transformation is getting more and more difficult if you take a look at it only from the infrastructure front. Because, you know, if you take a look at four or five years ago, people were talking about, you know, if you move to cloud, your infrastructure cost will come down significantly because you are going to do the pay per use. But now that, you know, all the local hosting providers also, you know, they have also realized uh, the way public cloud is coming. So you can see uh, globally, all the local hosting providers also optimize their costs. So when you really compare infrastructure cost, Apple to Apple comparison, then the the, the business case is really not uh, working well, right? So that is where the researchers are saying, you know, it's not about infrastructure if you go to public cloud, it is about the, the next steps in terms of uh, operational, you know, automation and the transformation that you have, that is where you will be able to save cost. For example, 40% of the cost can be, you know, optimized, where our 40% uh, uh, cost difference can be brought in. If you enable, automation across the stack you know when you go to cloud they obviously they say we have native solutions you can create a vm and so on but when you have to operate an application on top of it then you'll have to build it by yourself right so that is where we are bringing in the difference and uh, we are helping the customers to get that 40 percent uh, cost benefit of moving into public cloud bringing in the automation across the stack not just for SAP, you know, Symfony is not a solution only for SAP. It can also work for non-SAP applications, okay. right? From a future roadmap perspective, mm -hmm. we are, uh, we are, you know, we are making ourselves uh, as a, a technology group. We are actually moving into SAP CPI, SAP BTP, and so on. So that is the future roadmap that we have uh, as a company. So we, we, as basis 
uh, BCS also plans to move to other ERPs as well. So all the ERPs we are going to cover, that Oracle or Salesforce, whatever. No, we, no, no, our focus is predominantly on SAP, but uh, the, the cloud management platform, you know, that can work on Microsoft Dynamic. Okay. Okay, for example. Symphony as a solution, it can work on Microsoft Dynamics, it can work on SAP, it can work on OpenText, it can work on Vertex, it can open, work on Oracle, for example. So as a solution that supports uh, multiple combination, but as a company, we are still focused on SAP and uh, data. These are the two areas uh, in which uh, you know we are focused. That's, that's really great. So uh, I have been to the website of BCS and I, I find that there are two major approaches we are talking about. One is shifting to public cloud, like we have been already talking about that and one is automated maintenance. It will be great if you can, you know, pour some light on both of them, what is shifting to public cloud actually means in a very layman term and again the automated maintenance, what are the features that we'll be getting. Okay. So, you know, shifting to public cloud. You know, some people do it in uh, years, some people do it in months, yeah. right? Some people can do it in weeks. So we are the guys who can do it in weeks. So that's how we are known for. That is predominantly because of the experience that we are bringing in. Uh, you know, we, we started early in this game. Uh, and one, that is uh, one. And secondly, you know, we are not uh, split into groups. Like, you know, there is a group uh, that uh, operates uh, cloud engineering, there is a group that operates cloud architecture, there is a group that are, uh, you know, handles OAS. We don't have such uh, different groups. We have only one group that is full stack administrators group who can architect, who can design, who can implement uh, in cloud, who can manage SAP basis, or who can manage SAP database, or who can manage Linux. So it's one single group. So by doing that itself, we are bringing down the, uh, you know, migration effort significantly. For example, we started a project three weeks ago for a German-based customer. It's just exactly three weeks ago we started the project and within three weeks, uh, their three development environments have already moved into Azure. And that is right from design, creating the run books, creating the low-level design, creating the firewall rules, running a proof of concepts to show them how it works. So all these things happened within three weeks. So that was possible only because of our full stack administrators and only because of uh, full stack uh, automation and that is what we call it as a cloud migration in a fastest in a in an efficient manner uh, with uh, this kind of uh, you know abilities that we have on the maintenance you know once they once we moved into cloud now you know uh, when it comes to automated maintenance our aim is to anything that is uh, based on standard operating procedures Right, anything that can follow step one, step two, step three. Let's let's also talk about a simple opening a client. Right, in SAP basis world, opening a client is a simple task. It need not be done by you know some specialist who is like five years experienced or eight years experienced. But in most of the cases, you will end up having somebody with three years or five years experienced person to go into SAP system, open the client. Even in such cases, uh, we also get audit feedback saying somebody opened the client, but they missed to close the client, right? So that kind of things also happen. So those are the things, if there is a procedure that can be followed, be it a kernel upgrade or be it creating an RFC destination, yeah. creating a printer or restarting SAP or doing a OS patch, opening a client, anything or parameter adjustments, HANA parameter adjustments or Oracle parameter adjustments, any of that thing sort, right? So you can leverage uh, Symfony to automate and orchestrate. So we, we take care of uh, the migration portion of it or the implementation portion of it or the operational side of things. So our aim is to automate as much as possible so that uh, in a basis, you know, uh, whoever is hearing this, they may not also like it because I'm saying it because basis as a technology, you know, you really have to scale up. This is uh, the moment for you to scale up and learn other technologies, uh, especially, you know, where you can get hands on. Uh, being a basis guys, being the infra, or, you know, we, we have been closely associated with the infrastructure, right? In the basis world, I'm sure you would know, right? We always talk to the database administrators. We always talk to the uh, data center engineers. We always talk to the infrastructure engineers. Yeah. So instead of talking to them, you have to become them. You know, you have to learn those technologies because basis as a technology is going to shrink in the upcoming years. So it's moment for you to realize it and then uh, get on board 
and start uh, to working towards uh, becoming the full stack administrator uh, so that you know you are able to uh, make progress in your career so yeah as you say the full stack uh, administrator concept i just want to uh, have a question like how much time do you think a fresher will take to be a full stack administrator now when we talk about experienced professional we know that if the guy already knows basis and hana he, he will learn a cloud a bit and something about the os and networking and he can just pop in as a full stack administrator but what are your views when it comes to freshers and becoming full stack administrator do we have a timeline for that or how do you guys are doing that that that's a good question so i we have some examples of uh, some full stack administrators uh, who became full stack administrators uh, within within like you know 8 9 months they have become a full stack administrator that is uh, predominantly because i mean it's not uh, that you know all of our guys are able to, uh, girls are able to make uh, make it within that uh, period there are people you know who are becoming uh, like full stack administrator after two years that also happens But there are cases who were able to make it within uh, eight nine months so the way we do it is uh, we start with uh, we start our training in basis we start our training in azure aws gcp but uh, it's uh, it's more like on the job training the moment uh, somebody touches the symphony right so they are touching the full stack that's how it is you know we we, we start with the basis uh, uh, courses within the company they go through at least uh, you know two months of uh, basis course and then as part of this course they also get to learn symphony so the moment they go and touch symphony saying you know i need to install sap system using symphony then they will be forced to go through the layer of uh, you know Uh, Azure, AWS, or GCP operating system, database, and SAP. So as part of this process, uh, they, and, you know, we also trigger the process of you know how the cloud works. So they, they're getting forced. I mean, unless you force somebody, you know, who's coming from uh, you know college and uh, college pass out. So you know, unless you you direct give them the direction, saying you know th these are the areas you need to focus, right? So Symphony does that job. Symphony provides them the direction. this is how if you should take a look at sap installation you know uh, in traditionally what we do we ask uh, the operating system administrators or infrastructure people to you know give me a system with uh, this 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 parameters and then i will start with my work right but in this case in the moment they touch symphony they, they know exactly what is happening if you have to install sap what else happens you know because we have pre built templates so they are able to visualize it saying you know first i need to have a design and then i need to create a vm and then i need to add these many file systems i need to install these libraries i need to download the software i need to install database i need to patch it and then i need to install sap so that complete uh, you know flow is something they are able to see it that really helps us uh, to bring them up to speed so yeah. we have examples who are, who can build uh, sap clusters who just into sap for i mean with with, with the company for uh, i think 6 or 7 months they can build uh, sap on azure or gcp in high availability clusters believe me <laughs> that's really so that's the that's the, yeah. yeah that's the way we do and it's not only for the newcomers uh, we also seen it from the you know the lateral hirings or the experienced basis uh, consultants who are coming to the company so if they have that interest if they really want to get there they are becoming uh, full stack administrators within you know within 4 weeks or within 8 weeks time they are able to make it if they are experienced if they have willingness to learn the, what we give is we give a platform freedom and the knowledge around it you know in the company we have a lot of people who has significant experience in this so you know they can rely on them as long as they have time they have willingness they are able to learn it within two months time they become full stack administrators and they are, i mean they are also getting into projects so they are quickly moving on and they the career space yeah yeah that's that's so uh, impressive to hear that a full stack administrator kind of thing is existing now and you guys are doing this much uh in such a short span of time so it comes to like yeah. uh, my question that uh, my mind that how like for example i am sap basis and hana consultant so what i can think is we should we should be good with cloud we should have a basic understanding of operating system networking a scripting uh, language might help like python or shell scripting might help uh what are the more things that you will need uh, you think you can add on these skills to make a person from normal basis and hana consultant to 
a full stack administrator uh so they they, they just have to make their uh, hands dirty that is uh, what i would say yeah. right they i mean they have to spend uh, quite a bit of extra time <clears throat> because uh, they are uh, they have to fill a gap of uh, you know three or four other different stacks and then they need to learn uh, so like i said if they have time willingness and they can uh, you know make their hands dirty that the only challenge that is i see it in the market is they don't have guidance uh, i think that is how that is why this kind of podcasts can help them to provide them the guidance uh, because uh, that is what is lacking one is guidance and the the other one is the mentoring right uh, in terms of if somebody wants to uh, you know do these things in a large uh, corporations uh, you know you you they are divided into horizontals so there is a cloud team there is an sap team there is a you know os team so getting over the border is really a challenge so that is something i'm sure uh, this will change in the large corporations as well they would also realize that uh, if, they, if they are going to continue to work on this pattern mm -hmm. they're not going to add value to customers so uh, they will they will continue to see the throw over the wall they are also wasting the you know now we are seeing uh, this kind of recession uh, and uh, especially you know resignations and so on right and th now this is going to really uh, uh, make things difficult because you are not going to have too many people you are not you will not be able to have too many people in the project and so on so if you have to bring that down you have to enable this club culture if they don't do that they will be in trouble i'm sure they they are going to shift it when they shift it i think large portion of basis guys will become full stack administrators but until then our kind of startups i think that is where there is a possibility for you to quickly move into this space otherwise uh, it's going to be a bit of challenge uh, for those who are working in the fast track yeah yeah when we talk about uh, big corporates they have so much of segregation of duties that they they don't tend to have a versatile kind of guy i agree on that and uh, let's talk about like uh, when we talk about automated maintenance is the main mission behind is to reduce the technical expert count and have normal people who are just newbies and they can just run the automation script and uh reach to the now the aim is uh, yeah the aim is to you know the, basically the aim is for us to enable basis administrators to focus on something better something different if they continue to work on opening a client if they continue to work on uh, creating rfc if they continue to work on installing sap they are going to spend a significant time in this they are not going to get time to learn yeah. right yeah. or they are not going to get to do something different something progressive right so that is that is the whole idea of it it is not about uh, bringing down the number of experts down it is about uh, creating more experts in you know in a larger space that is the aim of uh, automating uh, the main trans yeah yeah that's when when you can when you, when you can execute a step by step procedures with the click of a button mm. why do you want to do that yeah. what is the value that you are adding right what is the value you are adding so your value is your, your brain right when you are able to think and do something better that is where you can add value that is where you can add efficiency yeah. if you if you can repeat uh, things uh, then uh, human value is not needed there that is how i see it yeah makes sense uh, as same was quoted by naval once that people are afraid of automation because they think they will lose their job but whenever automation comes up it makes more creative jobs available in the markets uh, since the uh, age of electricity and age of computer we have always noticed that yeah That Absolutely. Sense. So that is uh, that is exactly what we are also saying, right? So automation can bring down the SAP basis, uh, you know, standard tasks uh, down, but they get to become a full stack administrators, yeah. right? So yeah. it, I mean, ca currently it is a choice. Today, as of today, it is a choice whether you want to become a full stack administrator or you want to continue to become a basis administrators. Yeah. But tomorrow it will not be a choice. Tomorrow it will be a mandate yeah. that you become. So, why not start it you know why not uh, start it today itself so moving on to my next question uh, when we talk about shifting to public cloud in sap what are the choices for managing this uh, like what like i know about gcp i know about aws i know about azure what are the choices and what are the offerings that they are providing so you know all of them have their own uh, automation framework 
uh, if you go to azure they are also investing heavily to help customers who are is moving into sap to automate uh, things and similar to aws is got launch wizard and uh, you know google has got uh, their automation framework and so on so all of them are bringing in automation it's not that you need to have a so solution like symphony to be able to do it th things efficiently there are also native solutions available the only challenge is that uh, you know it is it is not a multi cloud uh, thing you know if you go into azure automation framework then you cannot do it for gc if you have if you have on premise you won't be able to use it for on premise secondly you know you will be dependent on um, individuals who can create uh, such a scripts who can handle it and so on so that is uh, another things um, and also you know the modular based and so on will not be available so those are uh, some of the reasons why customers choose uh, symphony you know, we got large customers uh, who are using symphony for azure gcp and aws the most important reasons are it is user friendly the you know the people it's 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 not very difficult for anybody to learn and so on if it if you're going with native frameworks then you should you should really know what you're doing then only you can get on to that but it doesn't cover uh, all the aspects of automation it, it is in bits and pieces yeah. you can do some installation you, you can do only s4 hana for example you cannot do oracle yeah, yeah. right so so that kind of uh, limitations uh, you will be seeing there okay so when we talk about you know shifting from uh, to a public cloud uh, when we uh, talk about the transformation process we just uh, like i know that time frame has been uh, insanely reduced by using symphony but what is what are the different challenges that we face what are the challenges that people are not moving or what are the challenges that are faced by people who are actually moving to cloud can you point on few yeah i think uh, there is there are no uh, challenges if you ask me if you are, if you had asked me this question for uh, 5 years ago people were talking about security right today i see a lot of banks uh, moving into azure aws and gcp uh, right so the security aspect uh, doesn't uh, you know it is not an argument as of today but uh, you know if there is any challenge it should be only internal challenge people don't want to move that's all I, that's how i put it because uh, in terms of benefits in terms of uh, transformation possibilities that you have in cloud yeah. it is enormous there are a lot of customers are moving compared to 3 4 years ago how it was today you can see a lot of customers are moving uh, i don't see any reason why you know somebody should not move into this there could be reasons like you know local guidelines or local uh, legal requirements and so on that could be one of the reasons you know some countries uh, they say you know their data needs to reside within the country uh, and then they should also know where exactly the data resides so if that is the kind of uh, requirements that you have that they have then there is a possibility even for that you know public cloud providers are working hard to enable the data centers in a particular country they are also in some cases they also share confidential information saying you know, this is where you are so that kind of uh, things are also being done by public cloud so there is i really don't see any challenges why people should not move into public cloud yeah. that is uh... that, that makes sense so what are the additional features that we are getting when we talk about moving to a cloud platform uh, we have already talked about the cons what are the additional features that we are getting so the, uh, the additional things are enormous actually right so if you talk about scalability you can scale up or scale down the systems you know you can optimize uh, you know the infrastructure resources that is also good for uh, the environment for example and not just on the infrastructure front so once you are into cloud then you can also run your transformation for example analytics is uh, one of the big topic um, in the recent years everybody wants to see the data everybody wants to work based on the data so you get the ability to you know transfer your data to uh, analytical platforms uh, you know be it azure synops or uh, google bigquery or aws uh, you know uh, related technologies so it it becomes really simplified when you have your systems on cloud and not just that uh, you know you can also uh, leverage some of the pass services uh, that is available within uh, any of these cloud providers to simplify your on prem uh, you know the the 
the old environments that you might have had you know maybe you had some databases running and you had to maintain the vms and we had to maintain some people there so all that you can transform into you know simplified the way of uh, handling things yeah. so in every angle you know be it uh, scalability or be it flexibility so you can you, you can you know if you need another s4 hana system tomorrow right do you who stops you in uh, provisioning and uh, installing s4 hana but if it is a traditional um, way of handling it then you have to order it uh, 3 months before or even today at least 4 months 4 weeks before you need to make an order so you need to get ready and so on right so from a flexibility standpoint you you get it things but the, the, the business transformation side also you have uh, you you can do a lot uh, once you have moved it uh, into the you know uh, public cloud environments yeah makes sense so uh, i have been uh, working on automation studios that are present in market so they are usually some agents that keep on running on uh, the host that are there so can you talk about the architecture because i just want to understand how the symphony works and what are the uh, integrations that we need to have with symphony yeah symphony has also got the agent so we have also work uh, based on the agent framework uh, so that uh, you know it becomes uh, seamless uh, for you to uh, handle the operations so simply like i said you know if it is a, if it is a web based application then symphony can call apis so it doesn't need an agent if it is an sap system then it can call a app so you don't need an agent but if you have to perform some operations in the database then you will need an agent in some cases we also go with the native solutions uh, of uh, cloud so if, if if the customer is willing to uh, say okay for that uh, then you can also have the cloud native uh, agents uh, for example so you know depending upon the technology to which uh, symphony is communicating so we leverage uh, that technology okay so is that a custom agent like we can integrate with any of the tool that yeah okay okay you can install it it's basically a custom agent in case of linux it's just an rpm package you can install the rpm package if it is windows it's just a zip zip folder you get it and then run it as a service so uh, we have already already been talking about uh, there are many automation in field of maintenance when we talked about sap and symphony so we talked about kernel upgrade we talked about printer we talk about opening connections what are the other few uh, offerings in maintenance sector that you can mention about so let's take an example of uh, running a, a monthly maintenance okay. right so monthly maintenance happens uh, almost all the customer environments uh, you know not just for sap sap non sap you are uh, you know forced to run a monthly patch uh, to ensure your environment is secure right yeah. so especially when uh, there are environments like you know hundreds of systems and uh, when you have a highly available sap environments right for example you have a cluster based environments then if you have to do the maintenance for uh, such an environment what typically happens if they don't have symphony kind of solution what typically happens is it starts with uh, like uh, you know they say sap administrator stop the stop the sap application uh, and then uh, cloud administrator take a snapshot and then os administrator you know uh, run a patch and then cloud administrator stop the vm start the vm and then uh, uh, sap administrator start the application within this if you have a highly available environments then the sap ad administrator needs to carefully manage it because you have a primary you have a secondary start with the secondary make sure the patches are done then go to the primary move the resources to the secondary and then patch it so that uh, you know we can enable near zero downtime for sap applications which are running in highly available cluster but typically what happens is they bring down both typically what happens because uh, you know you have a primary secondary concept but still what they to do is just because of uh, knowledge gap what they do is they bring both of them down give it to the os administrators os administrator patches it and gives it back you bring both of them up so that makes uh, your your customers business downtime you know instead of few minutes it becomes 4 to 8 hours yeah 
right you have too many systems like hundreds of systems you'll be able to relate it if you have to hundreds of systems then hundreds of systems goes into a bucket and then hundreds of systems comes comes back so they also take 24 hours to 48 hours to make this happen and basis administrator burn their weekends os administrators burn their weekends cloud administrators burn the why why is such a nice for such a simple activity yeah. it is like i said it is a prescribed activity step 1 step 2 step 3 step 4 step 5 right there is i mean unless there is a problem in bringing up the vm unless there is a problem in bringing up acp you don't need human minds to go in there and do it but we are burning so many hours so much of hours to make it happen so that is symphony can uh, orchestrate it yeah. whatever i said if you have eight systems it can orchestrate you know right from create uh, you know taking a snapshot uh, os patching stopping acp failing it over uh, and then coming back and uh, failing it back everything can be orchestrated so you give them the near zero downtime experience for os patch near zero downtime experience for kernel upgrades near zero downtime for system refresh system refresh take an example typically they take the system down for uh, the test system for more, at least a week if they have to do like uh, uh, three or four systems together then there will be number of people working on it they will take more, more than a week uh, to be able to release uh, for that time your testing team is completely idle because the system is not available yeah. right why do you need to do that you are if you are in cloud then you can also enable near zero downtime because you can do everything in a temporary environment automate it run it and then finally switch it over so your testers will not even realize that there is a new data coming in because we can do it within 30 minutes your te- test system is refreshed yeah. right so these are the additional things you can do with simply the possibilities are enormous you you think about uh, for example os upgrade you know not not just the patch you want to go from suse 11 to suse 15 you have the ability to do it in symphony you don't need uh, to spend a lot of time i will have an uh, image uh, which has uh, the suse 15 i'll just swap it that, that's so great so, <laughs> even even so those even, are the things yeah yeah keep going yeah those are the things we can do ashish yeah yeah even i saw a cute post when where a uh, administrator was able to do kernel upgrade by sitting just with his kid on on linkedin it was shared that was really cute and that was really thing that we were actually That's burning right. weekends our weekends and our family time and me time spending in those kernel upgrades and things like that which could have been automated quite a long time ago now yeah that's really yeah cool. that's a, there are some, there are some real life stories i mean that is one uh, where madhu was doing it uh, you know last to last week uh, one of our customer uh, global customer who is they are the number one uh, brewery in the world so they are using symphony for op- orchestrating their operations they did, they did a kernel upgrade of their 10 acp systems on azure yeah. quality systems which took which took basically 14 minutes yeah. completely in parallel 10 systems running in parallel 10 kernel upgrades running in parallel 15 minutes of uh, our basis administrator time which could have been 20 to 40 hours of time because because you know it's not just the execution time if the administrator make one mistake and you have to do it in 10 systems so typically at least uh, five or six people will be working different different people if one guy or one girl you know who is running the process if they make a mistake then the upgrade time also extends the downtime also extends yeah. but in this case it's the same procedure that runs you know start take a kernel backup upgrade it stop restart proceed right so so just in 15 minutes it was done similarly our uh, second i mean our another customer uh, who is europe's number one brewery where they did a system refresh of 19 systems within 3 days it is a basically we have set a world record i have not seen uh, in my 22 years of experience in basis i have not seen anybody doing i have i have done at least three systems refresh maybe five systems refresh in parallel but 19 system refreshes in parallel not just acp 19 scp systems and 21 microsoft dynamics tenant so this was refreshed so this is like well record the so so you you can do real heavy lifting uh, if you have this kind of solution that is really huge that is really huge what you guys are doing so let's talk about uh, symphony like if i want to learn about symphony and how how i can start with it it's just a product that is with the bcs or it is available for others as well 
how it is going to be we are uh, yeah so now that uh, this is an interesting question right so every basis administrator wants to know how it works you know when they hear about symphony they really want to try it so we are also going to uh, give a trial uh, for the basis administrators we are also creating training modules for basis administrators to to we have a exclusive learning and development team as well where we are developing the training modules for symphony step by step how it works and so on so very soon you will expect Uh, environment where the basis administrators can play around, and uh, you know where they can also get to learn how they can enable this kind of complex uh, workflows. That's great. That's great. I would love to enroll in this and see how it goes. Thank you very much, Prakash, for this. So uh, I would I would like to end this by asking a personal question. How did you come into this? You were also a basis consultant, and how from a basis consultant to to a basis automation domain, and now. having symphony as a tool how was your journey and like as you rightly said there are enough resources available but there are not enough mentors and guides who tell you that where to go with who was your guide or how do you cope up with that can you answer on that yeah i have got so so many people uh, to guide me right from uh, my first uh, boss who is uh, binod anand ja he is also today a basis administrator uh, well known basis administrator or basis guru you can say Uh, we have got sundar sundar uh, he's uh, he has been my mentor shiva has been my mentor sanjeev has been my mentor so there are a lot of uh, people who helped me you know to come to this situation but in terms of the startup this was uh, you know this was the purpose i had in my life uh, to get started with the startup uh, to help people coming from a struggling background you know who are uh, if you take a look at our company we give offer our you know we kind of uh, our first selection criteria for the freshers you know who are is coming from the government schools who are is coming from the rural area who are does not speak english well who are has uh, you know some kind of uh, struggling background so those are the guys or girls who come into the company who make their career in uh, in this space so that is the uh, purpose uh, it's not only my purpose it's the when we when we started i mean we wanted i wanted to do this but then there are a lot of uh, good hands uh, you know who joined us uh, for example uh, subu uh, mani or madhu there are a lot of guys uh, who wanted to do this uh, with me so that's how you know we are able to make a significant progress if you take a look at it uh, we are currently 150 people so we have grown uh, significantly in the last uh, one year and this was possible because this purpose has been transitioned into uh, everybody and everybody works for a cause that is how you you can relate to bcs uh, you know uh, that and that's the reason i'm also into this and doing this that is that is really great it was such a wonderful experience talking about the technical experience as well as the social initiative that bcs is carrying thanks a lot for agreeing to come to this podcast and it was really fun having you and uh yeah thank you very much again thank you ashish uh, like i said in the beginning you know you guys are doing a great job with uh, let's talk acp.com uh bringing uh, best of best uh, minds uh, here to share the experience i'm sure this session would have given uh, some kind of guidance to our fellow basis administrators i am looking forward to seeing a lot of basis administrators turning into full stack administrator that is also one of my personal wish that i have i am i'm sure uh, you know that is going to happen very soon and that's already happening and uh, that will have continue to happen Thank you for having me here. It was really great talking to you guys. Yeah, thank you very much. You have already inspired me to become a full stack one, so I guess this video will inspire many more. <laughs> Thanks a lot for this. Uh, okay, yeah. Thank you.